Studios, the AusBiz COB is the key stuff you need to know about the day in business and finance. Welcome to the COB. I'm Danny Akuye and Ed, I'm here with... Yes, Andrew Gagan. Great to be with you on this Monday to start a week. Not a bad start to the week. You know what? It is a really good start to the week because we did have a mixed lead from Wall Street overnight and obviously lots of geopolitics over the weekend, Andrew. So uh, the SIBO 200 up almost three tenths of a percent or four points. And I had the ASX 200 up uh, by about 22 points to 7,576. That record record beckons, doesn't it? That record beckons. Yes, we do have still a proverbial melt up. It's funny, isn't it? There doesn't seem to be any bad news and you there well, is bad but, news. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you set that up didn't you because it's uh, yeah all about the Middle East look it is a huge concern about what is developing there at the moment with that uh, with that conflict potentially. Absolutely so we might just check in with the three themes of today and uh, we have called it a Middle East mayhem which might be a little bit strong but nevertheless um, there are calls within the United States for America to potentially bomb Iran, although there is a lot, I believe, of uh, politicking behind closed doors, trying to get China more involved, because none of this is to China's benefit at this point in time. Well, cynically, you can say it is an election year in the state, so anything is possible. (laughs) Anything is possible, heaven forbid. Um, Andrew, we've also got this quarterly deluge that has started this week, and uh, Gold Road Resources, I think they saw a a drop in Mm. gold production um, at its screw year operation. Yep, that's right. And also it's cost of production rising at the same time. Therefore, a bit of a sell-off. Woolies also. Absolutely. So we're going to cover Woolies in a second, but just an interesting, talking of politics, an interesting reset on this one with them pretty much kitchen sinking the earnings in terms of uh, bad news. But it was the stock of the day. And uh, so let's touch on that. And uh, Koshi was joined by Nathan Somersamdaram from Deep Data Analytics and Josh Barker of Macro Capital. So let's listen to them. Today, this is not as cyclical as discretionary retail, but it is cyclical. Yeah. So you'll get it cheaper. Um, I wouldn't be jumping in. I think the cycle remains weak uh, for the next six to 12 months. It's going to struggle while there's, there's a fair amount of rate cut expectations priced in which will unwind and that'll be negative for it. So I think in the low 30s, I'd be looking at it again. Right. It's a cyclical. So right. you can be patient and wait for it. It's, it's a great operation. It's the preferred supermarket. Um, you know, sort of head, it's, it's taken against a goodwill, um, which I guess if you, you know, sort of buy into you know, consumers and staff being quite negative on the company, goodwill becomes less valuable, obviously. Yep. Maybe they don't have that name brand in New Zealand. Um, I'm actually not sure. Um, but it's not one that we want to be in. Uh, they're opting for sort of weaker outlook. And it's such a low margin business. If anything yeah. gets squeezed, they're going to... All right, that is the view of Nathan and Josh. Of course, that came after, look, it took significant write-downs for its Kiwi business, mm, didn't it? Mm, uh, mm. Look, a lot of bad news there priced in, but um, also it's in the midst of, uh, well, politically, uh, being <laughs> hammered at the moment. Absolutely. Because of accusations of price gouging and so on. Well, not just with uh, Woolies, but other supermarkets as well. Absolutely. So probably if one was cynical and popped on the cynical hat, <laughs> it's probably a good time to make earnings. Maybe not look as good. But anyway, let's have a look at some of, of the uh, sectors today. Now, energy was one of the strongest. It was up by almost 2%. However, I'll just quickly check in with some of the share prices that I have here. So just Woodside up by 2.3%. Santos up by just over 2% and Ampol also about 1%. So just worth noting off the back of those geopolitical tensions. But let's have a look at the banks because they have been pretty strong of late, Andrew. See, you go away and before you know it, Commonwealth Bank is heading towards $1.16. It's interesting, isn't it? Because <laughs> I haven't looked at um, 
Well, CBA for a while. Last time I think it was 100 bucks. And I of know. Of course, that's always a psychological threshold, isn't it? Yeah. And, uh, but uh, clearly investors back on the bandwagon as far as the big banks are concerned. Absolutely. So buying across the board with NAB and Westpac leading the charge today up by over nine tenths of a percent. Also industrials. I noted earlier on today that we had strength there. Transurban, Firma, Seven Group, uh, Brambles as well as Computer Share and Reese. And also Amcor was stronger today. So just worth highlighting that one. All right, let's uh, also get across some of the other updates we've had and those stocks that are moving. And uh, look, not surprising, one update from Suncorp there uh, with a reference to wild weather events, and there have been plenty of them on the East Coast in particular. Look, a share price didn't move hugely, but did give us an update there for the first half of the financial year, expecting FY24 underlying margins to meet previous guidance of between 10 to 12 percent. Uh, having released its first half results. Well, that'll come, in fact, at the end of February. And another one was net wealth. And so they have notched up a record increase in funds under management of $6 billion for the December quarter. So they've now got $78 billion under management. And for the 12 months to the end of December, a fund was up to, uh, by 25% to around $15.6 billion. That share price flat on the day. Now, a week after its uh, CFO resigned, BAPCOR out with a profit downgrade, now expecting revenue to come in at uh, just over $1 billion. And looking at Perpetual, they've revealed that their December quarter was the worst in 15 years for active equity fund flows. My God, what a mixed picture. Uh, it recorded net outflows of around $4.3 billion in its assets management business. However, total assets under management rose slightly to 200 and around $214 billion. And interestingly, that share price up six and a half. Oh, no, sorry. No, that Down. was Babcor. That was Babcor. Down 2.6%. Yeah. Whoops. <laughs> Uh, now, IGO, uh, interesting here that it did actually rise. Now, this uh, updating on its lithium business with its 49% holding of Tianqi Lithium. Um, and uh, look, it's actually pulling back its production there. Mm. Look, we've seen this across the board, haven't we? Absolutely. Uh, with all those lithium companies, uh, you know, particularly Core, which is really downscaled, that's been hit hard as a result. So, such a difficult space. Does beg the question, I think I saw this, was reading in the fin today. Is it a buying opportunity? Would you go there, Danny? <laughs> Would I go there? Me personally, I'm still holding, nursing some Pilbara because that is meant to be, according to the experts, one of the best stocks in the sector. But it is a classic cyclical flushing out in the resources sector. But hey, let's move on and let's welcome to the COB our friend Josh Gilbert from eToro. Josh, great to see you. Have a, uh, Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah. Now, huge week. Huge. Ginormous, I tweeted. <laughs> <laughs> we, have, we have almost everything going on. And, of course, it is big tech earnings time. Tesla. First of all, let's touch on that, Josh. Tesla was, um, well, uh, let's say it didn't live up to expectations, and that's putting it mildly. Yeah, look, I think it was the big disappointment, really, wasn't it? Uh, you know, sort of heading in, it had you know, missed sort of two of three earnings in, for 2023. And, and obviously, we got a f uh, sort of a third uh, with last week's results. And, and I think, you know, automotive m margins were, were probably the one uh, that sort of really saved it because that sort of came in slightly better than expected. But it was a miss across the board pretty much in, in most of the other sort of key segments as well. And, and I think that it just shows that there is, you know, a lot of work for, for sort of Musk and Tesla to ultimately do. Uh, but also, I think it just points to the fact that we are just sort of seeing this weakness across EV demand, you know, right now. And I think that is, you know, across sort of the, the broader industry, uh, rather than just sort of a specific Tesla problem. Um, look, I think there is a lot of positives to still sort of take away long term. You know, those EV sort of demand trends aren't going away. We're going to continue to see this rotation to electric vehicles um, as we move through the times. But it's been a really difficult couple of years for sort of that renewable space altogether. Um, you know, those solar names and, you know, you know, other sort of renewable energy stocks last year got a real beating. So uh, I think what we're probably going to see this year is a little bit more weakness um, again until we really start to see 
um, you know, th those sort of trends really start to reverse. And uh, maybe that doesn't come until we start to see, um, you know, rates come down a little bit more. Uh, but until then, it, you know, it, it's going to be, a, you know, a pretty difficult time for, for Tesla owners and, and unless Musk can sort of really uh, put, a, put his hat on and turn things around quicker than we expect. Yeah, it goes to our earlier point too, uh, Josh, just as far as pressure that those battery metal prices are under at the moment, in particular lithium and also nickel too, um, telling that story about what's going on more broadly with uh, particularly out of uh, EV demand there. But um, is Magnificent 7 no longer then? It's now Sexy 6 because <laughs> Tesla's fallen out. It, it does feel a little bit like that. I mean, I, I was actually having a, look, a little bit of analysis over the last sort of few days. And actually, when we look at the contribution that Magnificent 7 have made to the S&P 500 um, since sort of the fourth quarter last year, Tesla's is actually negative. So they, they haven't sort of contributed to that growth that we've seen of them pushing this S&P 500, you know, to record highs. So, you know, it is sort of losing its space, uh, place. We, we saw it with Netflix, obviously, with the Fang stocks. Um, you know, so if, if it doesn't sort of tend to deliver we might see it, see it fall out but you know i think that ultimately it has you know contributed very well over the last sort of few years um but you know we're going to see if those other names can live up to expectations this week as well absolutely josh so we've got microsoft alphabet apple and i think meta isn't it this week yeah, absolutely. Uh, Amazon in there as well. So Amazon five of the well. big seven. Oh. Yeah, so a, a huge, huge week. And I think what's going to be really key here is that we're obviously, you know, we're sort of talking about record highs of, uh, you know, the, the Dow Jones, S&P, uh, and obviously the NASDAQ. So we're going to really need a solid set of results across all these names here to sort of, you know, really keep those indices at record levels. Uh, but tech shares have, have sort of led performance again in, in 2024. They sort of picked up where they have in 2023 and investors haven't really been willing to sort of give up on on what was last year's winners just yet obviously we've had this big discussion about that rotation into maybe those cheaper and unfavored assets from last year you know i still think that happens but we're not starting to see it from investors uh you know completely just yet um ai i think again takes center stage for for sort of big tech we're going to want to see how that affects you know bottom lines i think apple will probably be the biggest focus for, for this week i think you know it's sort of lost its place as the world's you know most valuable stock um obviously microsoft also hit that sort of three trillion uh, market cap last week as well so that's had a really tough start to the year and that's obviously coming off the back of what is uh, you know sort of expected to be weaker iphone demand um but and they've also kept their ai cards really close to their chest as well you know you've got microsoft that is you know now the the biggest stock in the world and that's because they've you know really out there with nvidia and, and sort of chasing down ai with you know chat gpt um, with its sort of other rollouts around ai but you know apple really haven't given investors much so far uh the vision pro obviously may be something that it excites investors this week but either way, Tim Cook and his team need a really good earnings call this week. Yeah, those um, Vision Pros are really interesting. I was uh, listening to some people that had tried both the Meta one that I think is like around 700 US versus the Apple one, which I think is three and a half thousand, isn't it? Um, but it's amazing. You can put on the Apple one and then you can work off your MacBook Air through your Vision Pros, which is a pretty forbidding thought i thought to wander around with your computer connected to your head <laughs> it might be that we we're sat here in a few years time with all of our vision pros on having that sort of conversation oh, but maybe, right. maybe you josh but not yeah. the likes of danny and i i think we're past that point <laughs> <laughs> sorry i'm speaking for you i we might be avatars <laughs> by then yeah. anyway so we mightn't exist <laughs> <laughs> oh, all jokes yeah. aside, Josh, um, in all seriousness, if you had to pick which of those big stocks that are reporting that may disappoint, have you got any feel around that? I, I think if we're going to look at one, I, I think it's going to be sort of Apple. I, I think it's probably got um, the sort of the biggest overhang sort of coming in. But also at the same time, expectations are really high coming in for Microsoft. As we say, it sort of is taking out the sort of the, the top of the charts just this week. Uh, so expectations are going to be high because, as I say, with, you know, those AI expectations coming in, um, you know, investors are going to be expecting a lot. 
but also you know what we're going to be really wanting to see is growth in azure cloud and, and that has disappointed every now and again microsoft don't really have a history of sort of letting investors down there um they've only missed earnings expectations uh, just once in the last seven years so you know if i was a betting man i wouldn't be betting against microsoft um but as i say apple is probably the one where, where i say you know is, is seeing the biggest weakness so far and, and is really sort of struggling to get a foothold in the market and out of that magnificent seven is is sort of struggling struggling alongside Tesla as well. So yeah, Apple will be the name to, to watch this week, I think. Yep, all will be revealed this week. Hey, Josh, great to get across it. Thanks for joining us from eToro. Have a good week. Thanks so much, guys. Take care. Okay, let's have a look at some of the leaders and laggards in today's trade. And uh, okay, Babcor, interesting. Markets are liking apparently that downgrade stock off up by four six and a half percent. Bellevue Gold almost five percent. Emerald Resources uh, four point six. Lion Town, Lion Town. Well, that has got thrashed lately, up by four point three percent. And Megaport, we haven't seen that one for a while, up by three point eight percent. Yeah, on the negative side, let's uh, take a look at those that have been punished today. Gold, Road, yeah, look, a bit of a mixed picture both in gold and lithium at the moment. We've seen those winners and losers, um, but that's off the back of its update, so it has been severely punished. Uh, Cadium Lithium among those losers. Boss Energy, which has done extremely well uh, with uh, uranium, certainly on a tear at the moment. Um, perhaps a bit of profit taking there. Broker downgrade. Broker downgrade, there you Bell go. Potter. That would yeah. uh, not help, would it? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, you, maybe though. I've had enough, you've had your run, move on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, let's get into the smalls, uh, see what's going on in that part of the market. Uh, silver mines up by 17%, Paradigm Bio up by 15%, Aspire Mining up 13%, as was Argosy Minerals and Kingsgate Consolidated up 11 Every time you say smalls, Andrew, I think of underwear. Underwear <laughs> the, and the bamboo underwear, what's that Step company? one. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's you, Danny, not me thinking about that. Uh, let's uh, see um, Calyx um, that's punished again today uh, with an update there. Uh, Strickland Metals, um, Next Science. Yeah, so a lot of uh, losses there, particularly once again in the resources sector. Okay, let's check in and see what is happening overnight because it really is a huge week. And the US Dallas Fed Manufacturing Index is uh, out. Also results coming out from Franklin Templeton, Nucor and Whirlpool Earnings with Tuesday after the close, I think the big day when uh, the likes of Microsoft had their earnings calls. Now tomorrow locally we get uh, retail sales for December, uh, which obviously takes in uh, Christmas. Uh, of course we did see a um, lot of spending prior to that with uh, the Black Friday sales. Uh, Eurozone GDP for the fourth quarter, US Conference Board, uh, Consumer Confidence for January, US Job Openings and December Quarterly Production Reports for local companies such as Karoon, 29 Metals, Aroa, Biosurgery, uh, Jarvis Global, Megaport, Nickel Industries, Sandfire Resources and Zip. Yeah, busy, busy, busy because we are moving towards the uh, domestic earnings reporting season as well. Okay, final wrap on where the market's finished and I have the ASX 200 up 23 points on the dot, 7,578 or three tenths of a percent. What's your bet, Danny? Are we going to reach a record this week? Oh, geez, Andrew, that's a big question for that's a Monday. Monday. That's a worthwhile <laughs> question, I would have thought. <laughs> Oh, you know what? I mean, we well, both we both said it. Those geopolitical tensions are a huge worry at the moment. They and are. How that potentially I, could weigh on the market. Absolutely, I think they're overhanging. We've obviously got the FOMC meeting, which is really big. We've got yep. our inflation, but we do have momentum, and that's counteracting all of that. I was a tad surprised by the strength of the market today, so we might leave it there, Andrew. All right, we'll see what tomorrow holds. Join us then. Thanks for watching and listening. Have a great evening. Thank <music> you.